Hey guys, I'm Fabrice from Escha. And I'm Dayan from Escha. And in this video, we present to you the second edition of our series Frequently Asked Questions. In the last video, we've discussed Escha NDX, what it treats, if it can be combined with other products, how to dose, precautions and such. In this video, we will discuss similar and other questions for our product Escha GDX. I'll kick off by answering the first part of the first question. What does Asha GDX actually treat? Asha GDX treats ornamental fish suffering from skin flukes, gill flukes and tapeworms. The subject we're discussing today is a little bit complicated. So if we make certain distinctions up front, it will be easier for us to grasp all the material today. Another important distinction to be aware of is that we have certain worms that are life bearing and we have certain worms that lay eggs. Um, the skin flukes, and the word already suggests skin, they are predominantly found on the skin of the fish and they are life bearing. And the gill flukes, which are predominantly found on the gills of the fish, they lay eggs. Now, I say predominantly. That means that gill flukes in a certain situation can be found on the skin of the fish and vice versa skin flukes can be found on the gill of the fish. But predominantly they like to be on exactly as the word suggests. So skin flukes you will most likely find on the skin of the fish and gill flukes you will most likely find on the gills of the fish. One of the distinctions you can use in diagnosing your fish properly is realizing that the flukes we are dealing with today are host-specific parasites. Now, what does that mean? Most of you at home have a freshwater community aquarium, and community means you're having more than just one certain species of fish in your aquarium. Now, if you see that just one species of fish, one group of fish, for instance, your guppies or your platys or your swordtail fish, are suffering from something, you know, they're behaving different from the other fish, like they actually are infected with some kind of parasite, but all your other fish are fine, they demonstrate normal behavior, that you ring a bell with you. You should be like, okay, maybe these fish, these group of fish I have in my tank are uh, infected with some kind of host-specific parasite. And then you should realize, okay, wait, I learned from this video today that skin and gill flukes are a host-specific parasite. Ah, I should get Asha GDX. Asha DGX is very effective in combating these kind of flukes, these skin and gill flukes. Now, I also want to mention that uh, even though they are host specific, that doesn't mean that other fish cannot be infected. If you, for instance, change water from one aquarium to another, or you use a fish net that you use from one aquarium and you use it on another aquarium, or you transfer plants, that's a, all means by transferring parasites from one aquarium to another, or from one group of species of fish to another species of fish. Now, if the species of fish that the parasite attaches to and it's not their favorite host, they will still uh, you know, hatch on, but they will not stay there, maybe one day or two days maximum. But they still can affect these healthy fish as well. So that's an important uh, realization you must make. Uh, also, GDX is not so effective in treating roundworms and treating nematodes, but we do have another product for that called NDX, and we already actually made a beautiful video about that. All right, Dayan, that brings us to the second question. How do I know when to use Asha GDX? Very important. How do I recognize these worms? Proper diagnosis is always a challenge. And the best way in this case to see if your fish suffer from monogenea, read skin and gill flukes, is by taking a sample, by scraping the skin or the gills and putting that under a microscope to see if you have these worms. Okay. Yeah, but not all people have a microscope. If you don't have a microscope or professional assistance at home, you can also use a magnifying glass. You just take your fish out of the tank, put them in a smaller tank or a glass square box with bright light and put your magnifying glass over it. Now, especially when your fish moves and turns, you may see the worms attached to the fish. Mm -hmm. But we also have some early warning signals, which you can look out for to see if there's an indication for the onset of disease. And I suggest we break it down into the three categories again by discussing the skin and the gill and the tapeworms. Good. So maybe you want to kick off? Oh, I'll start with the skin flukes. Sure. Yeah, the symptoms related to specifically skin flukes. So if your fish are having skin flukes, what are the symptoms to look out for? Uh, fish are stressed. 
you know, they behave in a stressed way. They have some parasites in their body. They don't like it. They want to get rid of it. They're just overall stressed behavior. That's a very clear sign that your fish is suffering from skin flukes. Um, the first line of defense is the skin. And what you see is when fish suffer from skin flukes is a change in color of the skin. It becomes less bright. And fish under attack by parasites, they actually produce more mucus to protect them from these parasites. Uh, you know, it's, you can see it kind of like an irritation, you know, irritation of the skin. Now, because these fish are producing more mucus to protect themselves against these parasites, the, you will see also their fins are start clamming, you know, closely held to the body. Clamped fins, so that's a clear signal there's something going on. And you also see a change in their normal swimming behavior. You can see them being more lethargic, hanging at the surface of the aquarium, or just being lethargic, hanging on the bottom of the aquarium. Or they just disappear out of plain sight, they start hiding because they don't feel well. And when they do swim, they swim very slow and they are kind of like hovering around in the aquarium. You can clearly see there's something going on. It's just not typical mobile swimming behavior. And one other clear, clear sign that they're suffering from parasites is, you know, they want to get rid of them. They start rubbing their bodies against anything they can find in the aquarium. Against the glass, rocks, gravel, plants, anything, decoration, anything they can rub against to get rid of those parasites from their skin, they start doing that. And an interesting feature uh, to observe in fish with long tails, such as veal tail goldfish or guppies, is that they can suffer from hemorrhages. You know, they become so irritated of the skin flukes, they, you see actually blood patches. You see these hemorrhages forming on the body and on the fins of the fish. And you can see the widening of the blood vessels in the tails of these kind of types of fish. All right, that these are some real clear pictures you can see inside your aquarium. Very that clear. Indicate, yeah. Very clear. Naked for the naked eye, you can just see there's something going on with my fish. You don't need no magnifying glass. No. Okay. Skin flukes. Well, I also have some, but then with respect to gill flukes, and we start off simple, like day on set, fish show stress behavior. But another specific feature for gill flukes is abnormal fast heavy breathing mm -hmm. and this has to do with something you already mentioned Dayan, mucus production. Mucus is also produced inside the gills and that makes it more difficult for the fish to breathe. On top of that the gills are under attack, they get damaged so scar tissue is being formed which makes it even more difficult for oxygen to be exchanged. So um, your fish may even go to the surface to grasp for air they really have a difficult time. The third one has to do with this, that you may see the gills of the fish are open and wide. It's also a very clear one. Mm -hmm. And lastly, because of the irritation, they want to get rid of it. Fish may rub their head and gills against anything inside the aquarium, like you told. And that brings us to the third category, tapeworms. Tapeworms indeed, says Toda. What kind of symptoms are associated with tapeworms? Well, important to realize tapeworms are in the inside of the fish, inside the intestines of the fish. But again, the fish will not feel nice, so they will show stressed behavior. So for the skin, gill, and for the cestoda, for the tapeworms, stress behavior is a normal, typical symptom. Um, but you will see that it's not so nice to mention, but this is true. Sometimes you can see protruding uh, white worms from the anus or the mouth of the fish. So that's a clear signal that it's tapeworms. Um, but don't confuse uh, these kind of uh, tapeworms with long, white, transparent feces that fish sometimes have. What you can see is that the body of these worms are actually segmented. So that's a clear difference with these long, white, elongated uh, feces. Uh, and sometimes you find segments of these worms on the bottom of the aquarium. The fish actually uh, release themselves from these uh, from parts of these worms. And another clear signal something is going on that your fish are suffering from tapeworms inside their intestines is that they lose weight, even though their appetite is absolutely normal. You feed normal, you feed them normal regime, but they keep on losing weight. Clear signal something is going on, says Doda, tapeworms. This brings us to the next question. And that is, what other products can I use with Asha GDX? 
And I would like to divide this one in, in two categories where we have other manufacturers and Asha products themselves. So to start with other manufacturers, the answer is very simple. Don't combine any of our products with the products of other manufacturers unless the manufacturer itself states you can do so. Okay. In the case of our Asha Aquarium products, we already figured out if you can do that. And because the skin and the gill are damaged and under attack, uh, the fish become more vulnerable to secondary infections. Mm -hmm. And when this happens, you can also see advanced stages where you see yellow or white spots on your fish, uh, even lesions on the skin. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we recommend to use ASHA 2000 in combination, just a normal dosha, dosage to combat these other infections. These secondary infections. Exactly. And yep. this treats fungus, fin rot, and bacteria. Yeah. All types of secondary infections. Exactly. Yeah. But we also know that some people have chiclets in their aquarium. Mm -hmm. So if you have those, for example, discus fish, mm -hmm. We do not recommend ASHA 2000, we recommend ASHA Hexamita yes. and also just the normal dosage. Clear? Super. And that brings us to the next question. Can you use ASHA GDX in marine aquariums? Well, you cannot. If you have problems like these in your marine aquarium, you should take your fish out and put them in a quarantine tank where you can treat them separately. If you have new fish coming over to your aquarium, we advise you to use the same quarantine procedure before adding them to your new aquarium because there can be many consequences if you add new fish with potential parasites or other diseases to your new aquarium. Yeah. So very important, I've like said, GDX, do not use it in your main reef or marine system. Have a hospital quarantine system, put the fish in there and there you can treat with GDX if you have no live rock and just a simple sponge filter, that's enough. Then you can treat with GDX very uh, successful on marine fish as well. Uh, next question, uh, yeah, most important question, how do I dose uh, Asha GDX? Well, most fish diseases are highly contagious and they spread very quickly in close environments, such as an aquarium. Uh, so it's very important to do a quick and proper diagnose and start treated, treatment immediately. So um, if your fish are suffering from skin flukes, um, you do the standard dosage with GGX. And the standard dosage involves, it's a five day treatment. Day one, you add one drop of GGX for one liter of aquarium water. On day two, you add half a drop of GDX for one liter of aquarium water. Day three, the same, or uh, half the drop of GDX for one liter of aquarium water. And day four, you don't do anything. You just observe your fish. Hopefully they start already feeling better. And on day five, you do 20 to 50% water change. Now, when we look at uh, gill flukes um, who are uh, egg laying and they are more resistant, we've come to find out, it is advised to do an additional dosage of GDX. So what you do after the first dosage, you wait three days until day eight. And day eight, you start the whole procedure over again as if it was day one. And when you're in doubt, if your fish are having skin or gill flukes, and sometimes even have both, just go by the worst case scenario, which is the gill flukes. So you do the normal dosage and the additional dosage of GDX. It's better to be safe than sorry. Now, when we use GDX to treat tapeworm, cestoda, um, there's a little background information we have to give because we advise you to not just use GDX, but also after use ALX, the other product of uh, of Asha. And why is that? Because we've come to find out that when people treat their fish suspicious of having tapeworms, cestoda, that they do a successful treatment with GDX and then they come to find out a couple of weeks later that the fish are suffering from tapeworms again. So it seems to be there's some kind of life cycle going on there and there actually is. When you uh, look at gill flukes, uh, they have a direct life cycle without an intermediate host. But when you look at these tapeworms, they have a more complex life cycle with an intermediate host. And these intermediate hosts are actually small species of crustaceans. Um, they're always present in the aquarium and they're part of the group of copito, uh, sorry, copepoda. Quite a, quite a word. Yeah, quite a word. And 
think about Cyclops, Daphnia, these kind of crustaceans, these animals, they can carry actually the eggs from these tapeworms. They develop into larvae, the fish eat these crustaceans, they get it back into their body, it develops into another tapeworm, and the whole problem starts all over again, and that's that cycle. So when you do the ALX treatment after the GDX treatment, you stop the cycle because you kill the intermediate host, the crustaceans, so you know, the, uh, the fish cannot get reinfected again after that. Now, uh, all that information I give you, if you go to our website, go to the support page, and there is a dosage calculator, just put in the volume of your aquarium in liters, and you will get the whole steps again, and the exact amount that you need to dose. We'll provide the link to the dosage calculator in the description box below. So, thank you for this clear explanation. That You're brings welcome. us to the next question. Can I repeat GDX treatment if necessary? Mm -hmm. Well, you can. If there's any reason that your treatment did not work properly, mm -hmm. you can, like Dayan said, keep three days in between separate treatments, repeat it. Just make sure that if you use filter medium, you don't have retracting capabilities in there because that diminishes the effect of the product and that could lead to the fact that your product did not work Right, and so any, any filter with any retracting capabilities, such as uh, fresh active carbon. Exactly. Take it out. Because then you yeah. think your product does not work, and yeah. then you have to repeat it. Yeah, and the product and was actually working, but it was diminished by the effect of the uh, retracting capability of the filter medium. Exactly. Yeah. Well, next question. What fish can be treated with Asha GDX? You can treat freshwater tropical fish, mm -hmm. cold water fish, and marine fish. But marine fish only in quarantine tanks. Exactly. Asha GDX is well tolerated by ornamental fish, freshwater ornamental fish, mm -hmm. even more sensitive species like freshwater stingrays. Okay. And we did not observe any negative effects on crustaceans, snails, nor clams. But indeed, there is not enough information uh, to make statements about invertebrates such as anemones and corals. So, in case of marine aquaria, we advise you to do the quarantine procedure with your marine fish. Correct. And marine fish, as you all know, they're a wild cut. They can actually carry these parasites. Very important to do a whole quarantine procedure with ESHA using NDX and using the GDX. You will find a quarantine procedure on our website as well. Next question. Are there any precautions I need to consider when using ESHA GDX? Yes, there are always precautions that you need to consider. Um, in general, we say do not use any filter material with retracting capability. Um, you know, what is that retracting capability? What are these kind of filter materials? Anything chemically activated filter media such as fresh activated carbon, any oxidizers, raisins, but also UV lights, turn them off. And that is because they can actually absorb the product and diminish the positive effect of our product. And some of these substances can actually release toxins after a while. So that's also not a good thing. It's something definitely you want to avoid in your aquarium. Uh, in general, always check the water quality of your aquarium. Very important that uh, your fish swim in good quality water because usually they become more susceptible to diseases if the water quality is not that good. So before any treatment, we advise to use the Asha Aqua Quick Test. It gives you a quick indication of the water parameters if your water quality is good. And it's just generally a very good uh, aquarium husbandry to do a 25% water change every month and continue filtering over biological filter material, such as wool, sand, gravel, etc. And keep your filters running day and night, also during treatment. Uh, clean your filters on a regular basis. And if you have, let's say, an electrical power outage, it's always a wise idea to have some kind of oxygen uh, backup you know, anything that supplies oxygen. So nowadays you have these oxygen pumps and they have a battery inside. So if the filter or the electrical power fails and the filter is not causing any water movement through your tank, then you at least have this electrical pump with a battery that will kick in as soon as the power goes out and it will provide the aquarium with at least oxygen and a little bit of water movement. If you do a water change during or just right after treatment, it is advisable to treat that newly added water again with the GDX because you've taken it out. And yeah, those are some of the precautions that came to my mind that I wanted to share with you. People sometimes ask, how do I keep my fish healthy after using GDX? Well, we have two products for that, namely Asha Optima and Asha Mineral. And these contain 
trace elements, minerals, and vitamins to strengthen your fish's immune system, helping it fight off diseases. And it speeds up recovery after treatment. That sounds like a win-win to me. Very true. Ash Optima is quite a remarkable product. It uh, really helps the fish in gaining a good immune defense system against any parasites in the future. And you will actually see superb quality of coloration in a fish. And don't be surprised to see offspring in your fish when using it on a daily basis. It's just four drops per 100 liter. And after two, three weeks, you'll see real actual results. I promise you. So that brings us to the question, should I do a water change after using GDX? after the treatment. Well, okay. you don't have to because like Dayan told you, there is a water change included at the fifth and or at the 12th day of treatment. Of course, also like Dayan said, you should do regular checkups on your aquarium uh, water quality. Mm -hmm. And if it's necessary to do a water change, then of course you should. But in general, it is included in the treatment. True. Okay, that comes to uh, the last question for today. Can I use GDX in an aquarium containing shrimp, crayfish, snails, or mussels? And the answer is quite simple. If you have a freshwater system, absolutely yes. And actually, if you go to our website, you will see a in the support section a comp compatibility chart or a compatibility list, if you will. And it will show you different species that people keep in aquariums in combination with our products. And it will tell you if it is combinable or not, or if there are any cautions, precautions, you have to take measures into account before using a product when you have the certain species. I think we just finished the second episode of the Frequently Asked Questions series. I think so too. And if you guys have any comments or if you have any more questions, don't be shy. Put it in the comment section below in the video. Everybody in the fish community can learn this way from each other. We learn from you guys and hopefully you guys learn from us. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to be one of the first to know about our new videos. See you next time. See you next time.